Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be going over the construction and some flights of this uh, mini delta wing here. Uh, this plane's about 61 grams, so well below the 250 gram limit. And it also has an onboard flight controller and FPV camera, an all-in-one FPV camera. Uh, also in this video I'm going to go over the steps to get to this plane, which was a uh, second version of design. This was the third, and then also a little bit of footage from the first design, which didn't go too well, but managed a few little flights before it got destroyed. As you can see, this one's also been completely demolished at this point. Uh, the main point of this plane was to uh, first create a design using the new uh, wire cutter slicer I've been working on. I wanted to do a plane entirely through the slicer, so the wings and the fuselage have been uh, all the G code is created using the slicer I've been working on, and then also I wanted this to be a uh, a test bed for this dual channel brush DSC I've been working on since November 2020. Uh, this ESC is designed to take a throttle input and a mixing input and then mix it onto two brushed uh, motors. Uh, each channel can drive about four amps and it runs off one cell. And then the ESC also has a built-in switching BEC that can output up to 2.1 amps to the rest of the system. So the ESC is powering the flight controller, the all-in-one camera VTX, the receiver and the servos off of the onboard BEC. And uh, I'll have a video just for the ESC sometime later. But I mainly designed the ESC so that I could uh, create smaller planes uh, with a smaller footprint that have uh, dual motors and accept uh, differential thro uh, throttle. Um, the ESC is completely reprogrammable and has various different settings. You can give it uh, on startup using... Uh, throttle to reprogram it similar to other commercial ESCs and uh, I guess I'll get more into that later but uh, enjoy the rest of the video. So the V1 started as a uh, little delta wing that I wanted to try to make capable of taking off vertically uh, just being able to push the throttle and take off straight from the ground without having to throw it but from the way I positioned the motors and uh, how small the actual plane was, I wasn't able to balance the CP too well. And the prop wash from the propellers blew right over the control surfaces, which ended up effectively creating uh, vector thrust, but it wasn't controllable. At least it definitely wasn't controllable by me. Maybe if I had an onboard flight controller, it would have been feasible. But in the end, it ended up being completely destroyed, so I moved on to a second design. For this one, I increased the overall size of the fuselage so I'd be able to move the components around a bit more to adjust the CG, mainly the batteries. The actual difference between the weight of just the fuselage between the V1 and the V2 wasn't that much, going from the smaller design to the larger design. It was only about a 3 gram differential because the foam is pretty light. And I also moved the motors to the back so that the prop wash wasn't going over the control surface as much. So here you can see at about 45 or 50 percent throttle, there's more than enough thrust to take off from the ground. But when actually testing it, the thrust line was a little bit off compared to the CG, so it just pushed the nose up. So not really the most effective for taking off vertically. After doing a few test flights in my backyard, I uh, took it out to the front yard to try just going around the street a few times. With it being so light, running into anything really doesn't cause any harm except the pushing in the nose. And with the foam being so squishy, it just bounces right off the ground, which is pretty nice. But uh, any other flights I ended up doing out in the flight field, just because with the wind, it was twitching around a lot. Hear how well the foam absorbs the impact from how squishy the sound is. So for the V3, I pretty much just scaled everything up again. Uh, I ended up increasing the wing area quite a bit more compared to the previous design. And then I increased uh, how thick the fuselage was to be able to move stuff around a bit more. Uh, and in the next few minutes, just a time. 
time lapse of the wire cutter cutting out the pieces. I ended up changing the cut path generation based off of uh, some suggestions by Force2D. And the new cut path generation really helps to reduce additional artifacting from the pieces pulling themselves into the wire when they break away from the foam, thanks to gravity pulling them down. It still happens a bit on pieces that are very small and light because they can still get sucked in from the surface cohesion of the uh, foam melting. But when they're large enough, they just fall down and stay away from the wire, which is pretty nice. So putting together the plane after the cut is pretty easy. You print out the sheet that shows the numbering of which sections which and then label them so you know what order to glue them in. And I just use some foaming Gorilla Glue and pin them together with some uh, pins. The main issue with this one was I picked up some new foam from Menards and the surface finish on the foam sheets is actually pretty bad. So when gluing them together it's not quite uh, perfectly aligned from uh, bumps and other ridges on the two faces, the top and bottom of the foam. And then also there's still a little bit of mismatch from in the actual cuts themselves, which I think is mainly due to the workpiece not being completely centered between the two gantries. First time I actually cut the fuselage, I forgot to change the workpiece thickness. Uh, it turns out the foam from Menards is 18.5 millimeters, and the stuff I was using before uh, was 14.5. And as you can see, that resulted in quite a bit of a longer fuselage. So if you ever use it, just make sure you have the workpiece thickness right. shot with all the electronics mounted onto the airframe and the TPU hinges I used to connect the control surfaces which actually came out to be pretty light and then I also used some three by half millimeter carbon fiber spars to reinforce the trailing edge of the fuselage uh, this helps to improve some of the stiffness I picked up an F3 Magnum mini flight controller from a recent Emacs sale to use on this build Overall, it was a little bit tedious to find the pinout because it's meant to be used as a stack, but here's the S-Mix and resource configs I ended up configuring it to, to get it to work with the servo outputs. And then here's a diagram, a quick drawing of uh, what pins are actually which, and this is on the connector that goes into the stack on the bottom. And then for this build, I also made a custom Betaflight build that changes how disarming affects the servos. Since the ESC is being ran off the servo output, I wanted to make sure everything was disarmed. And then also since the mixing is used to differential throttle, if the all wasn't held to the middle servo position, it would also cut on the motors.
could have gone a lot better. It seemed like the plane was a bit too tail heavy. And also the gusting from the wind with such a low wing loading was also bouncing the plane around a lot. Uh, we were getting about 12 to 13 mile per hour gust during this day and we're right behind tree line here at this airfield so a lot of the gusts were pushing it up and down a lot. I think without the flight controller on, the plane definitely wouldn't have been flying at all. I probably would have crashed it a while before this. So after those last two flights, the V2 is completely destroyed at this point. I mean, it could be repairable with some glue because it's not it's pretty similar to how I put it together the first time. Just glue this back together and then replace the carbon spars. But at this point, I think I'm just gonna take these electronics and put them onto a different different plane design. This serves its purpose of uh, getting more flight testing to uh, change the design off of for the V3. So after the V3's last flight, I ended up cutting the battery uh, the battery bay larger so I could fit two batteries into it. This puts the CG right about here and before is about a centimeter and a half back which I think was probably a bit too far back so hopefully with it moved a centimeter and a half forwards it'll be more stable. I also went ahead and as you can see covered a lot of the top surface in Gorilla Glue because for stuff like this uh, through the last three designs I found that Gorilla Glue uh, with its tight foam structure and the rigid foam it produces actually uh, is pretty good at improving the rigidity of this style of, uh, of foam while keeping it light. So instead of putting additional carbon fiber spars in, I just put some additional uh, thin Gorilla Glue along the top surface of the wings and the leading edge here. And that did help uh, stiffen it up a bit. It's still a little bit more flexible than I'd want but it's so small, I don't think this should be too much of an issue. I am probably gonna try to sand down the bubbles that I didn't quite get to stay down. And then I also wanna reinforce the wing, uh, wing joint a bit more. On the bottom side, it's pretty good, but on the top side, I noticed that it flexes a little bit more than I want. Uh, so hopefully with the two batteries now, it'll fly more stably. Also, it should fly longer since it'll be at about uh, 1300 milliamp hours now instead of 650. The only thing I'm a little concerned about with this was after it landed, the motors had gotten pretty hot. So I might want to put some more Gorilla Glue around it to uh, keep the motors from melting through the foam or uh, getting some smaller propellers because I think these propellers might be taxing the motors a bit too much but also increasing the stability of the plane would probably mean that I can fly at a lower throttle so I won't be taxing the motors as much. And thankfully, this flight controller has a beeper because otherwise I probably would never found it in the tall grass. But yeah, so hopefully there'll be some more flight footage soon with it flying a bit better. Thanks for watching. Bye.